My Best Friends Live in the Woods The Adventures of Albert by Anne Michelle Moracek Chapter 22 Dance for Joy As the sun began to set, the peach blush of sky began to darken into brilliant orange, dark clouds outlined against the brilliant streaks. Firefern was playing with the swallows, swooping from the sky to dip his long fingers in the water of the stream as it flowed below. The swallows were catching mosquitoes and moths for their supper. Firefern flapped his sturdy red wings as he skimmed the water surface, then swooped up again to rejoin the swallows. He was young for a fairy and enjoyed playing with the birds. Twinkle Blue was sitting on a flower at the brook's edge, sipping nectar from a bouquet of honeysuckle flowers she held in her long fairy fingers. Her wings and long flowing hair were an icy blue, and her eyelashes were a shade darker with a sparkle of crystal dust on the ends. She pulled her long thin legs up to her waist, the petals of her skirt falling around her. She was daydreaming as she watched fire ferns show off. There was always too much time for daydreaming. The fairy world vibrated on a higher frequency than the forest folk. They could slip in and out of their dimensions at will, sliding as if in a dream from one world to the next. Time seemed as if it were always on pause and there was little incentive to do anything at all. And so it was. Starduster and Rain Dancer and Moondrop were plucking the seeds of the maple tree and tossing them down to see them spin in circles on the way to the damp, leaf-covered ground. It was a game they played until the last whirly seed had been plucked. Vine Twiner was trying to ride a toad. <laughs> he laughed and kicked the fat green creature in its sides. Jump, I tell you, jump! <laughs> when the toad finally leapt across the pond, Vine Tyner whooped with gusto. What a ride! <laughs> then he flapped his wings and lifted straight up off his mount. He tipped his hat at the toad as he slowly lifted higher into the blaze orange of the last of the sunset. Another day was sliding into night and the fairies hardly noticed. They just were, ever in the present moment. Suddenly, the trumpet vine flowers began to sound a blast. All the fairies stopped and listened in frozen detention. Then a great call went out from one to the next. The lanterns are lit! The lanterns are lit! The call spread like a mighty wave. Instinctively, each fairy lifted, wings of every color, sparkling twirls of crystal dust and flowing hair. They all rose from all over the forest. It was like a great magnet lifting them toward the great glen. As more and more joined, they began to fly in a circle over the glen, slowly at first, but building in speed as their numbers grew. From their vantage point above the trees, they could see a long, slow-moving procession of dots of light as it twined its way through the forest toward the great glen below them. Far below, Mother Skunk and her family had joined the parade, each of them proudly swinging the lit lantern they had lovingly made. Bluebell held Charlie's hand. If you get tired, I can carry your lantern for you, my sweet. Charlie nodded, but was determined to make it to the glen on his own. Jack trotted along next to Timothy. Jillian was walking with Anthena and Mother Deer, and Clara had run up to walk next to Albert. Jimmy Squirrel suddenly scampered over to Albert. Come on, Albert, let's run ahead and throw acorns at Gabby and George, he taunted. Jimmy, this is serious, behave. Albert sent him a disapproving glance. 
Ah, come on, it'll be fun. He twitched his tail with mischief. What is wrong with you? No, get back in line. Albert chided. Party poop. Jimmy scampered off. Will he ever grow up? <laughs> Clara laughed. Albert smiled at her as they continued to wind a path to the Great Glen. Isn't this exciting? Clara reached out and took Albert's hand. Yes, very, Albert smiled. It was a beautiful sight. The procession wound its way along the stream and then up the hill. As the procession entered the glen, they traced the spiral of light. But instead of leaving their candles, each held their lantern and continued round the spiral until every creature stood, lantern flickering in the spiral below. They still could not see the fairies and all waited with held breath. No one sure if the fairies would actually come. The fairies looked down at the waiting spiral of lanterns, each one held by a hopeful forest folk. As if by some magic signal, the fairies stopped their spiral and hovered still in the air above the lanterns. Then they reached out to each other, their long, delicate arms outstretched, long branch-like fingers intertwined. With one large collective sigh, they inhaled and slowly, slowly exhaled. As their breath expanded into crisp night air, it began to crystallize into sparkling snow of every color. Their vibrations began to slow. Another slow inhale, an even slower exhale. They were trying to match their vibrations to that of the forest folk weighing below. A third inhale, then exhale. Albert was the first to see them. Look, he pointed up, they're here. A blur of sparkling mist began to crystallize over their heads. As all the forest folk looked up, flashes of color and the hum of beady wings began to descend. Coming ever closer, they began to see a flash of wings, a tiny face, or the petals of a skirt, all in a blur, as if looking through the ripples at the bottom of a lake. Then a lovely lone voice began singing, one sweet soprano, rising from the spiral of lanterns. Join us, dear fairies, here in the glen. It's been 12 long years to see you again. The call of the lantern, the promise of old. We value your friendship more than gold. The beautiful song entwined with the rising smoke of the lanterns, lifting its way to the fairies above. It's Jillian singing, Claire whispered in Albert's ear. And so it was. The beauty and magic of the night swelled up in her soul and overflowed an inspired melody. It must have pleased the fairies because suddenly they were all around, flittering and darting among them. They were so fast. One would suddenly be right in front of you <laughs> and then just as suddenly gone in a swirl of sparkling color. As more and more fairies began to appear, the forest folks set down their lanterns and began to dance about, laughter and light filling everyone. They were all fully lost in their present joy. Twinkle Blue spotted Charlie and was of course dazzled by his blue eyes. The two played tag and tickled till dawn. Bluebell made special friends with an emerald green fairy with large purple wings. Her name was Amethyst Glow, and they promised to visit again before the next 12 years slipped away. Claire was dancing with Rose Red when Albert was suddenly tapped on the right shoulder from behind. 
When he whirled around to see, no one was there. Then the tap was on the left. Again, he twirled around to see, no one. Then he heard a twinkling giggle. <laughs> I'm too fast, it teased. Where are you? Albert laughed at their game. Then suddenly a tall fairy, as fairies go, with wings fluttering so fast Albert just saw a blur, was nose to nose with him. Albert jerked his head back to see him better. Stardustor at your service, he said and swung his hat down and bowed with a flourish. I'm Albert, pleased to meet you, he grinned. Starduster wore a pointed hat that seemed to be made of red maple leaves, the stems twined together at the top to make a center point. The ruffles of the leaf edges encircled his face. He wore a tiny black vest with bits of clamshell from buttons and brown trousers. But what Albert noticed the most was his eyes. When you gaze into the dark centers, you seem to be looking through them into the stars of the night sky. I like you, Starduster smiled at Albert. You are special. Your eyes are kind and your spirit is loving, he observed. I can grant you a wish, he studied Albert's face. Albert was amazed. He couldn't think of anything to wish for. <laughs> he had his family and dear friends close and was very content with his life. Then he thought of his raccoon mother and sister. I know where they are, Starduster smiled. Who? Albert asked. Your raccoon mother and sister, of course. I heard you thought. You can do that? Wow! Albert's eyes were wide. Tell me, are they all right? He was all at once excited and afraid. Yes, they are fine. They are miles and miles away in another forest, and they do not forget you. It was as Albert imagined. Then, I wish that you would get a message to them. Tell them I love them. Albert felt a great wave of relief and joy flow over him. Now he could let go of the terror of that horrible night of the flood when he was so small. Never again would he have to fear that they might have drowned that horrible night. I will do that for you, Starduster said as he darted from side to side. Now let's dance! Yes, Albert grinned. Let's dance for joy. Chapter 22, Dance for Joy. Discussion and Questions. Time, Inspiration, and Wishes. The fairy's world experiences time at a much slower pace than the forest. Question 1. If you had 12 days for each of our one, would that change the way you live? Question 2. Would you be 12 times as productive, learning and creating, pursuing interest we do not have time for in this life? Or would it make you lazy and uninspired to do anything? Jimmy wants to tease and play, but Albert realizes that behavior is inappropriate for the situation. Question three, do you have the self-control and situational awareness to know when to be serious and respectful? Jillian was inspired to sing, blessing everyone with her melody. Question four, when is your heart inspired to sing? When the fairy offers Albert a wish, he truly asks for the one thing that will give him peace. Question five, what would you wish for?
I am the composer and performer for all the music in this video. Both audio recordings and the printed scores are available on mybestfriendsliveinthewoods.com. I will provide the link below. The painted illustrations are also my creation. Prints are available on mybestfriendsliveinthewoods.com. This is a novel. The chapters are meant to be heard in the order in which they were written. And while each chapter can stand alone, they do build as new characters are introduced and past events are referred to. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The chapters are numbered, so if you're just joining us, be sure to go back and watch from chapter one